Hello everybody, my name is Yvonne and I am a 2022 PharmD candidate. I will be talking about spironolactone, also known as aldactone or Carospur, for the treatment of hypertension. To start off, I will be going over some main patient counseling points for spironolactone. Spironolactone is used for the management of hypertension unresponsive to other therapies. All spironolactone products may be taken with or without food, but they should be taken the same way in respect to food every time. The spironolactone suspension must be shaken before taking. Some of the more common side effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, drowsiness, gynecomastia or enlargement of the breast tissue, menstruation disorders, and erectile dysfunction. Now, these side effects are more serious. They include itching, hives, swelling of the face, hands, mouth, or throat, chest tightness, trouble breathing, blistering, peeling, red skin rash, blood in the stools or urine, vomiting blood, mood changes or confusion, muscle pain or weakness, an uneven heartbeat, unusual weight loss, and any unexplained bruising or bleeding. If you notice any of these side effects, be sure to contact your doctor right away. Now we will be going a little more in depth on the medication spironolactone. Spironolactone is an aldosterone receptor antagonist, or as some may refer, an anti-mineralocorticoid, MCRA or MRA. It is also classified as a potassium sparing diuretic. Now spironolactone has many labeled indications which include edema, heart failure, hepatic cirrhosis, hypertension that is resistant or unresponsive, primary hyperaldosteronism, and also as well as some off-labeled indications, which include acne vulgaris, hirsutism, polycystic ovary syndrome, and premenstrual syndrome. For this video, we will be mainly focusing on spironolactone for the treatment of hypertension. Spironolactone, as mentioned before, is used for the management of hypertension that is unresponsive to other therapies, which is also known as resistant hypertension. This is defined as blood pressure that remains above gold despite concurrent use of three antihypertensive agents of different classes taken at maximally tolerated doses, one of which should have been a diuretic. Spironolactone works by inhibiting the effects of aldosterone by competing for the aldosterone-dependent sodium-potassium exchange site in the distal renal tubules, as you can see circled in red in the figure on the right. This inhibition leads to an increase in sodium, chloride, and water excretion, while conserving the potassium and hydrogen ions. The dosage formulations come in tablets and a suspension. There are three tablet strengths of 25, 50, and 100 milligrams. As for the suspension, it comes as a 25 milligram per five milliliter bottle. The initial dose recommendation for tablets is 25 milligrams once daily. This can be titrated as needed based on response and tolerability up to 100 milligrams once daily. The initial dose recommendation for the suspension is 20 to 75 milligrams per day in one or two divided doses, and this one may be titrated at two week intervals as needed based on response and tolerability. When it comes to dose adjustments for renal impairment, be sure to get their estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR, to see if the dose may need to be altered. For tablets, an EGFR level that is greater than 10 no dose adjustment is needed, but be sure to monitor the renal function closely as hyperkalemia is more likely to occur in patients with renal impairment. With an EGFR less than 10, avoid use. An EGFR between 30 to 50 in patients with heart failure, consider 25 milligrams every other day. For an EGFR greater than 50 in heart failure, consider 12.5 milligrams to 25 milligrams per day. As for the suspension, an EGFR that is greater than 50, no dosage adjustment is needed. But for an EGFR between 30 to 50, 
consider an initial dosage of 10 milligrams once daily, again, due to the risk of hyperkalemia. For hepatic impairment, there are no specific dose adjustments. However, do use it with caution, as minor alterations of fluid and electrolyte balance may precipitate hepatic coma. Here are some warnings and precautions when taking spironolactone. Spironolactone may cause a fluid or electrolyte imbalance. It is possibly tumorigenic. In chronic toxicity animal studies, it was shown to be a tumorigen, but in recent studies, it didn't suggest an increased risk of prostate or breast cancer. Spironolactone should be discontinued prior to an adrenal vein catheterization, and it should be avoided in triple therapy which is the combined use of an ACE inhibitor, angiotensin II receptor blocker, and spironolactone combined. In elderly patients, you want to avoid the use of tablets greater than 25 mg per day in patients with heart failure or with reduced renal function. The suspension is not therapeutically equivalent to tablets, so in patients requiring greater than 100 mg per dose, use tablets instead. There are a few contraindications when it comes to taking spironolactone, which include hyperkalemia, Addison's disease or chronic adrenal insufficiency, concomitant use with a plerinone, anuria, severe renal impairment, and acute renal failure. As for monitoring parameters, be sure to get blood pressure readings, serum electrolyte levels, uric acid, glucose levels, renal function, and volume status. Here are my references. And thank you for listening to my presentation.